All right, so the next thing we want to actually take care of is animating this header logo a bit. Right now, if we go to the current application and I open up the keyboard, I'm just going to show it on iOS, same applies for Android, but you can see that the logo stays the same size. It looks fine on iOS, wouldn't work, or sorry, it looks fine on the iPhone 6, it's not going to look quite right on an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 4 or a variety of Android devices. And you can see on the iPhone 6, even though it's not critical, some of our one of our buttons, this reverse currencies, isn't available. So to alleviate that, what happen, What we want to do is upon opening up the keyboard, we're basically going to reduce the size of this uh, background image and this center logo or the logo as a whole by half. That'll reduce the overall height and keep the correct aspect ratio so that we can see the entirety of our interface when the keyboard is open. So if I look at the mockups, you can see basically what it's going to look like um, on Android. It'll look like this, and then in a second we'll switch over to the iOS version. So when the keyboard opens up, it'll just be very smooth animation to reduce the size of that logo. So that's what we'll be doing in this lesson. If you want to do this on your own, I suggest checking out the keyboard module, which is a core React Native module. Um, that's what we're going to be using to actually get this effect and set it up easily. All right, so let's dive into the code here. Um, all of our work is going to take place inside of this logo directory, the logo component directory, and then we're actually going to do most of our work inside of this logo.js and the styles.js. What's going to happen when the keyboard opens up is we're going to take this image and reduce it by half. So we know we've got the current size of the image, which is going to be half of whatever the device width is. Basically, when the keyboard is up, the image width is going to be a quarter of whatever the device width is. And just so we've got it all set up, we're going to set up a few style sheet variables so we can use those inside of our style sheet and then also in the actual component. Uh, first one we're going to set up is going to be our large container size. And this is going to be the image width. And we're also going to set up our large image size and we know this is going to be the image width divided by two. Uh, we can now go ahead and actually use these inside of our styles. So if I take this large container width I can just replace uh, on the container image style property we can replace the width of that with the new variable we've got set up. Uh, save that there and then we can do the same for the height and then we can also replace this logo width with our new large image size. So I'll go ahead and actually save that here. And then when I save it and reload it, you can see that the correct image size is being used. So that's all set up. Let's also set up our small versions of these. So we'll have the small container size and that is going to be the image width divided by two. Okay. So we want, like I said before, uh, the small version of it is going to be half of whatever the larger version is. And then we'll, we're also going to say the small image size is going to be the image width divided by four, again, making it half of uh, what the larger version is. So all of our styles are set up. We should be good to go to actually close this file. And then we can do all of our work in here. Now, in addition to the keyboard module, which is what's going to allow us to actually listen to when the keyboard opens up and when it closes, we're going to be using the animated API to actually handle the animation uh, in a performant way over using typical React state. Um, to actually use this, we're going to convert the stateless component to a traditional React component. So up here, I'm going to go ahead and import component. And then I'm just going to take everything that's inside of our parentheses, and I'll copy that. And then I'm going to say class logo extends component and then we'll set up our render method and then we will actually return the component we had before. Now the way we're actually going to listen to the keyboard opening and closing is via the keyboard module which comes from React Native and we want to listen to that in our uh, component did mount. We want to make sure we remove that listener when the component unmounts. First thing, let's go ahead and actually set up the listener. So I'm going to say uh, this dot keyboard show listener is equal to keyboard dot add listener. And then right now I'm going to say keyboard will show. 
And then the second parameter of this is actually going to be a function to be called when the keyboard is shown. And just to keep this component did mount uh, clean, I'm going to actually put this in a, in a separate function on our component. So I'm just going to say keyboard show. All right, and then we can go ahead and actually create this function. Go down here and we'll say this dot, or sorry. It's just going to be keyboard show, and then we'll set that up like this. We'll also set up our other one, and that's going to be keyboard hide. And then just like the other, it will be keyboard hide. Uh, so next up, we actually want to set, set up our hide listener. So we can say this dot keyboard hide listener. I struggle to spell listener, geez keyboard.add listener and then this is going to be keyboard uh, will hide and then we want to call that keyboard hide function when that actually occurs so we can save this and if I go ahead and debug debug this remotely let's go ahead and say debug remote JS alright and I've now got the uh, debugger set up in Chrome so what I want to do now is actually, just to make sure this is actually working, I'm going to say console.log keyboard did show, and then we'll also add one for the, we'll hide right now, and we can say console.log keyboard did hide. So let's save this, and when I check out this, and we actually open up the keyboard, I'm going to press, uh, actually showing the keyboard, so uh, for me, I need to press Command K, and then I can hide it, and we can see as I do that, we're logging out the different events. So we know our keyboard listener is set, is listening correctly. And the other thing we want to do, it's always important to, whenever you're setting up listeners, that once you no longer need that listener, to actually hide that listener when it's, or to remove that listener once it's no longer needed. So we can say this dot keyboard show listener, and then I'm going to say dot remove. And then for the hide, we can say this dot keyboard hide listener, and we will also remove that one when this component is unmounted. All right, and now we can actually start setting up our animated variables uh, that will actually allow us to animate everything. So up here, where we're importing things from React Native, I'm going to also import animated. Make sure to spell things correctly. And then the first thing we'll do is actually think about what, what's going to be animated and I can tell you that uh, this background image and this icon those are going to be two animated items those are the, the things we're going to be changing the size of when the keyboard opens up and the animated library comes with its own image component view component text component and maybe a few other ones and that's what we want to use right now so that once we set up our animated values we can actually pass those to those image components and it will then understand how to render them and what to do when those animated variables change. And to do that, it's very, very simple. So here I've got my animated.image. I'm just going to say animated, or I've got an image and I want to change it to an animated image. And I will make sure I do the closing version of that. And then also we've got this animated.image. Now when I save this, it's not actually gonna change anything, which is perfectly fine. It's just going to allow us to adjust the styles and use animated values to actually style those. And to set up these values, I'm going to go up here and we'll set up constructor. We're going to pass props to that and we can call super props. Um, next thing we want to do is actually create the initial versions of our animated values. So I can say this dot container image width, which is going to be our outside container. That's going to be a new animated dot value. And as we saw before, we can use the styles we set up before. So I can say styles dot large container width. Let me make sure that's actually the correct variable name, uh, large container size. So we'll pass that in here and that'll be our default value. And then we can also set up the this dot image width. And this also will be a new animated dot value and we'll use styles dot large image, uh, image size. Make sure I spell everything correctly. It should throw an error if I've got anything wrong here. And so far, so good. All right, so let's actually try to change this uh, image or drive this these different images based off of these values. And to do that, we can go down to our render method. And just to keep uh, where we're actually assigning the styles a bit cleaner, 
going to avoid setting it up there but I can say const container style and this is actually we'll change this to container image style just to not confuse us with this container we've got here and in here we're going to set up an array where we can pass multiple styles in there first off we want to pass the container image style because we still want to retain all of those defaults and then we also want to set the width and the height based off our animated value so I'm going to say the width is going to be this dot container image width and then we also want to set the height to be that same value so container image width make sure to use a comma there and then we actually want to use this container image style uh, for this animated dot image which represents the container image so I'll just replace the styles.container image with our new container image style. And I'm changing code, not getting errors, so that is a success in my book so far. Uh, let's also set up the new image style array for the logo component of our logo. And that's going to be const image styles. We'll just say image style. And that's going to be an array. Again, we've got the styles.logo, so we're going to pass that in here and then we want to drive the width of this image based off of that this dot image width that we set up that's an animated value and we will take this image width and pass it down into our animated dot image and replace styles dot logo with it so far so good but it's not actually doing anything so that's that's no fun let's actually wire things up to do things all of this work is actually going to take place in this keyboard show keyboard hide functions um, so we can go ahead and delete this I'm also going to turn off remote debugging just so we stop getting that error that was the wrong thing we want live reload uh, we will stop remote debugging so to change animated values you want to use the different animated methods we're not going to dive deep into them um, there's plenty of documentation out there on them but what we'll be using is the animated dot timing method and the animated dot timing what we're going to do is actually specify what value we want to change so we're going to be changing the container image width and then the second thing we want to do is actually pass a configuration variable so the second parameter to this function and the first thing we want to do is actually pass what value we should be going to and in this case it's going to be styles and then we want to go to the small container size and that's the first required value so let's actually see what happens when we do this and when we open up the keyboard nothing's happening so what what we need to do is actually tell this animation to start once we've set up our configuration told it what variables should actually be affected we need to tell it to start so I can do that here uh, let's try and open the keyboard again and you could see that very smoothly this uh, background image changed size and obviously the uh, logo inside of it didn't so we need to make sure we fix that but one other thing I want to actually change at this point is the duration it takes for that an animation to complete. We'll just make it happen a bit faster so um, it's not quite as noticeable. And we're going to use this variable in, or this same number in a few different places. So I'm going to uh, create a new variable to store that value and it's going to be animation duration. It's a fun one to say. And I'll just pull this up to the top of the file. And we're going to say const animation duration is equal to 250, meaning 250 milliseconds. So that's all good to go. Um, this will happen just a bit faster now, which is what I'm looking for. But you can see that first off, this image, the logo inside doesn't change when uh, the container image does. And when we close the keyboard, it's still small. So we want to adjust those. We'll take the uh, logo issue in first. So you may be thinking we can just take this exact same code and we'll say instead of this dot container image width we'll say this dot image width and then we'll set this to the small image size um, let's see what happens when we do that open this up open the keyboard up and you can see it works just fine uh, once the keyboard opens up now this isn't exactly the best practice here there's a way we can make this a little bit more succinct and we can make it very clear that all of these animations should run in parallel at the same time and that's via the animated dot parallel function so just like animated dot timing animated dot parallel uh, 
it's a function and inside of it we pass an array and that array is going to be all of our different animated functions that should run at the same time. So here we've got two animated functions that should run at the same time. So we can copy these and we're just going to pass those in whoops, as parameters. And then I'll save this to actually format it. And if I comment these out and open this, you can see the image is no longer changing. And that's because we got rid of these dot starts. You don't want to call dot start inside of uh, our animation functions inside of an animated dot parallel. But we do want to tell the animated dot parallel when it should start. And so at this function, we'll just then call a dot start on that. And we can see now when we open this up, we've got those two animations running perfectly in parallel, making the complete logo smaller uh, when the keyboard opens up. Now let's clean this up and then we can do the same thing for when the keyboard actually closes. So I'll copy this and I'll move down here. And the only difference we're going to change here is rather than saying a small container size, we're going to say large container size. And this one is also going to be the large image size. Let's go ahead and test it out. Looks good. And you can see that we're able to easily change the image size when the keyboard opens and closes. Very smooth. Um, the way animation works in React Native is, is pretty interesting. It's pretty neat. So there's resources out there to learn more about it. I won't dive into it too much here. But we do have one issue, and that is on Android. So let me open up my Android simulator. All right, so I've got the app running on Android here. And let's just make sure we've got the latest. Okay, and when I open up the keyboard, you can see this image isn't changing. We saw it was just working perfectly fine on iOS. We've got the same version going on. Um, so what, what's the issue here? And it all comes back to our keyboard listening module. Um, you can see here we're using keyboard will show and keyboard will hide. And unfortunately, um, even though it provides a better animation in my opinion when we actually can start the animation when we know the keyboard will show versus when it did show, um, that event isn't available on Android, at least at this point in time. So how do we work around that? Well, rather than this keyboard will show and keyboard will hide, we need to use keyboard did show and keyboard did hide on Android to actually listen to that event. So to do that, let's actually get rid of that import because we no longer need it. And we'll be able to actually specify what event we should be listening to by using the platform API. And with that imported, we can then set up a check. So if the platform.os is equal to Android, uh, we'll then go and actually listen to events in a slightly different way. And I want to minimize the code reuse we have. So I'll say let show listener. And then I'm going to set this equal to what we've currently got set up, which is going to be the keyboard will show event. And then we'll also set up a hide listener which is going to be our keyboard will hide event. And we can go ahead, copy these. Whoops, one line too many. Um, but basically on Android, we want to make sure we change these from keyboard will show and keyboard will hide to keyboard did show and then keyboard did hide. So basically these are just going to be called uh, once the keyboard is fully up or once it's fully closed. So we don't want to have those let variables there. And then we can just take these uh, variables we've set up and put them in place of that keyboard will show and keyboard will hide. And we can save this, get the simulator to reload. And then if I try to open up the text input, you can see that the logo does indeed or make get smaller when the keyboard opens up. We can close it here and you can see it works. It's not quite as smooth uh, because it's happening after the keyboard opens and closes, but it's still plenty valuable interaction. And then let's go to the iOS simulator just to make sure everything's working fine still. And again, we'll just make sure we've got the latest version on uh, iOS and then we can open up the keyboard and you can see that event works the same. So. Uh, that's how we're going to be working with, that's how we're actually getting the logo to be smaller when the keyboard is open, just so more of our uh, interface is available to the user even when the keyboard is open.